Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Very few people are able to define what an archetype is. I wonder if you could uh, do that. Yeah, very simply. An archetype is an experience or a feeling or an image that everybody seems to have in common. And so you take the yin-yang symbol, which both of us are wearing. Well, that represents the polarities of life, which constantly revolve. There's a little bit of yang in every yin. There's a little bit of yin in every yang. There's a little bit of good in every bad. There's a little bit of bad in every good. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of female in every male. There's a little bit of male in every female. Mm -hmm. All right, that's sort of a universal experience. That's archetypal. This is what we call an archetypal symbol. Okay. And uh, I did have the pleasure of interviewing Jean Shinoda Bolin, a Jungian therapist who has written a couple of books along the same lines, Gods in Every Man, Goddesses in Every Woman. And uh, her point was that if we're not conscious of the myth uh, that is uh, un operating in our lives, then the myth runs us. And we, we become, in effect, the slave to a myth that we're, we, we may not even fully understand. And she felt we have to become conscious because these archetypes often have a dark aspect to them. And uh, by becoming aware of them through some of the processes that you're uh, describing, then, then we can turn that around uh, from being something detrimental in our lives to something positive. Good heavens, Jean is a friend of mine for 50 years, one of the wisest people I know, male or female, a psychoanalyst. Anything she's written, your listeners should read and they'd derive benefits from. Yes, again, along the lines of Joseph Campbell, there's a deity, a god, a mythology in all of us. Mm -hmm. And she told people to try to find out what they had in common with the Athena myths in Rome, the Minerva myth, or the Jupiter myth, the Zeus myth, mm -hmm. or the Mercury myth, for example. She did a masterful job in that book. I wouldn't even try to rewrite it or repeat it in any way. Mm -hmm. Well, you and I share some things in common. We're both engaged in work that takes the inner esoteric realities and brings them to a, a larger public. And uh, would you say we're being guided by a myth in, in doing that? Yes, I don't think anything should remain esoteric or hidden. If it's going to be of value, let's put it to use. The world is in very bad shape. The planet is in very bad shape. Let's use all of our accumulated knowledge, whether it comes from shamans, whether it comes from uh, ancient traditions, whether it comes from myth, put it to use. Let's save people, let's save the planet, let's uh, save the wildlife, let's save nature. We don't have any time to, use, to lose, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, what would be the guiding myth for, for that sentiment that you just voiced? The guiding myth would be, in my opinion, let's be of service. Let's be of service to each other. Let's be of service to all creation. Mm -hmm. 